Hello there YouTube. Today we're going to learn how to change guitar strings. It's, you know, you have to do it so that you have guitar strings on. If you break one, you're like, oh, what do I do? Uh, how am I going to go about this? I don't really know. So you probably have to put on some guitar strings. It's a very, you know, intricate process and, and the likes. So <laughs> here we go. All right, so the first assumption is that probably whatever guitar you're using has some kind of strings on it. They might be terrible or old or just, you know, fine and you want to change them because, you know, like, mm, for some reason you want to change them. That's the assumption. So, I'm going to start again with the assumption that there are already guitar strings on your guitar. So, and this is pretty obvious how to take off guitar strings, but in case you don't know, mm, probably good enough. Okay. So, and um, just for the record, sometimes I leave mine wound up at the top. Um, and really, there's no reason I do that other than I used to not have a lot of guitar strings on hand or new guitar strings, want to pay for them or something. So I would, um, whenever I change strings, I'd keep the old ones, and then those ones would be like my backups in case I didn't have new strings with me at the time. Yeah, don't bother to do that, because just buy new strings, because old ones are going to sound bad no matter what. So, but you can wind them at the top if you prefer the way, of, the way it looks or whatever like. Look at that, how great. Yeah. Rockstar, all right. Okay, so, um, so yeah, first, um, pretty much take off the guitar strings. Typically, I guess you'd have, um, you know, just a little nub in here at the top, but instead I got these guys. But you just loosen it a whole ton, a whole lot. And, I mean, just to start out with, especially if the strings are put on the wrong direction, then it doesn't matter which way you're going to loosen it, just, you know, go till it's, the note is lower, essentially, so. Like, that's getting lower. Cool. All right, so I'm going to do this for a little bit, and I'll fast forward through this. Okay, sounds good. There's tools you can use to do this. Those are pretty handy. I don't know what they're called, but I've seen people use them. So, I mean, you can use one if you want. They're like yellow a lot of the times. But I don't have one of those, so I'm not going to use it. It's got my good old hands. I got the tools that God gave me, and other ones also that I buy, buy on the internet, but also the ones that God gave me, so yeah, look, got hands, legit. I'm also going to bother to say, don't, uh, some people, I don't think this is a big thing, but you can like cut strings off, that's weird, don't bother to do that. You could if you wanted to. Actually, you know what? Let's try that. I'm going to try that on one of these. But I think no matter what, you should loosen it first. That's a, probably an important thing. So I'm going to cut this string. I've never actually done this before, so I'm just going to try it. So at the end of these, i got a little wire clippers right there in the middle. So I'm just going to cut this right here. And cut it like, yeah, towards the middle of the guitar. Because if you cut it over here, then you can get, like, sometimes if it breaks right here, that little bit, can fall into the guitar and it gets lost. Kind of like a pick gets lost and that's really annoying. So I cut it. That's actually not a bad deal. Um, if you're not planning on using the string at all, again, you can do that. I just did it. So, And then, especially up here at the top, it makes it a lot easier because now instead of having to unwind this whole, you know, long thingy, just pull it right out. Man, I'm loving this. Teaching myself some stuff. This is what teaching's all about. All right. Moving right along. I'm just going to cut all of them. Something I bet something terrible is going to happen at some point, and then it's going to be hilarious. I'm going to fast forward a little bit too, again. Ah! Look at that. That was great. Okay, so now, um, you're down to this point. you got all these strings hanging out here. Look at those. It doesn't sound good. So, whatever shall you do. It's really easy. These guys right here, they come out. See, that comes out. If you have a guitar where they're like really stiff or whatever, which is a thing sometimes, you can get tools. Um, there's something that kind of looks like one of those little things. Hi there. Hi. So, my lovely wife came in, so I had to pause it. Now I'm back. 
So here we go. All right. So moving right along. So um, yeah, these guys come out. Take them out like that. Just pull them right on out. And if they don't come out, which can happen sometimes, then you can use an energy pliers. Bloop. Where they've got these things that kind of look like um, those things that you use to pry Legos apart from each other. I've got some of those. I guess it's kind of also like what you use to, um, like the end of a hammer or whatever. You know, take it out. So, but anyway, so just make sure not to lose these guys. Set that on aside, and then just do that for all the strings. And it's not that difficult. So just pull them on out. I'll fast forward this bit too. Oh, one other trick. Um, if it's not coming out, like if it's hard to actually pull it out, if you push the string down, like, it only really works for the bigger strings. So there. Push this guy, like, into the guitar a little bit, then it pulls out a little bit easier. The reason for that is, um, the reason these guys don't come out as well when the strings come out, I mean, are over here later, is there's just a lot of tension pushing these down while that's being pulled up. So if you release that tension, it'll go like that. Pretty neat. I'm set that guy aside, I'll keep going. Okay, so now you've got a nice, you know, clean guitar, no strings on it, and it doesn't sound like much. So that's disappointing. You can't really play anything on that at all. Alright, so now you're like, man, I need to put on some new strings. I'll do that. So the things that are going to be useful are wire cutters, these guys, and strings, which are necessary. I, I personally enjoy Daddario's. Um, I used to play Elixirs a lot. I feel like they're kind of too bright sometimes. Um, and also they're really expensive, so that's a thing. Uh, Martins, I feel like, can be kind of dull, and those are really the only three that I have used enough to have an opinion on them. Um, I've played other strings, I'm sure, on other people's guitars, but haven't been paying attention to what strings they are too much. But I really have enjoyed Daddario's, so here we go. So open this guy up, and also the thing I like about these, which probably a bunch of others have this at this point, I know Martins didn't for a while, but they're color-coded at the backs little balls at the end here. Those guys color coded. Wonderful. That's great. Awesome. So that you can know which strings go where. I enjoy that. Um, so, you can just look at the back here and be like, hmm, look at all these color. You know what? If you're colorblind, that would really suck for that. I'm sure you figured out some different way. But if you're colorblind, I apologize that this might be a bit more difficult. It kind of sucks. I'm sorry for that. But if you're not, then you can follow these instructions. If you are, then you might need to, I don't know. Mm, I want to be the best person to help, because I don't have that much insight on that, so... Yeah. Alright, continue. So now, let's see, I'll take a look over here and I'll say, hmm, the sixth string, E string, interesting. That one is the brass colored one, so... Boop. <laughs> There you go, brass colored. So I'll just untangle these guys. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. untangled. I'll put the red one aside, which is the fifth string, which is the A string. Um, you might also notice in these videos, I kind of interchange what number the strings are. Like I'll say fifth string or first string or whatever. Interchangeably. Well, not fifth and first, that's a different thing. But fifth, first and sixth, I'll kind of flip them around. But you can probably listen to this thing. So I guess sixth string you'd say is the low E and first string is the high E. Yeah, that makes sense. I'd go with that. Okay, so. Um, so there's these little holes in here. Floop. In the bridge. You put the little ball inside the hole. Floop. And just kind of push it down in there a little bit. And then um, get the pin. And then stick it down on top of it. So you push it down kind of as hard as you want to. And then pull up on the string so that, you know, it's kind of tight. You don't have to, like, push it up so that it comes out or anything. I don't know if you could, actually. It doesn't, doesn't feel like you can, so that's good. Good engineering jobs, people who make guitars. Then you'll take this string, as such, um, kind of loop it in the nut up here. Ugh, there's a little ridge line. No, nope, we're good. We'll just leave it. Leave it where we're at. You can see it. There's a little ridge line right here, and you'll stick it in that guy. And then this, you'll see the end's a little bit pointier. Hang on, I don't know if you can 
whatever. You can't see it because my camera's bad. And whatever, you just, you know, stick it through here. All right, so I like to take it out all the way like this, just pulling it tight. And then take about like this distance from one, pe one tuning peg to the next. And then pull it back that far. That might be a bit much. Hmm. I vary sometimes. I'll do like one and a half. So I'll do it right here. So take that spot right there, and move that back so that that's right there, okay? Okay, so then now, there's a bunch of different ways that you can, when I first played guitar, somebody showed me that you can like loop it through itself so that it's holding on to itself and it's great and whatever and it works better. I think I've found that it works just as well to just kind of stick it through here and it's tighten it and let it do its thing. Um, okay, so I just hold this guy in the nut right here so this part stays about the same tightness. Even the back here is all floppy. And then I'll just let it kind of slip through my finger up here as it pulls from right there. So that'll kind of shoot back at you. Don't poke your eye out. And then one thing to keep just, it looks prettier and it just works better. Just keep this top part um, on the top. Don't let it dip below anything else. And as the string winds around, here, it hasn't done it yet, but I'll show you in a minute. I'll get a little bit closer. So here, you see, uh, you can't really see from that angle, whatever. The string's trying to go on top of the part that's already wound. Just keep putting the part that's starting to wind below what's already wound on there, if that makes any sense. So I'll show you what it looks like in the end. So you might need to kind of shove it up there a little bit. Ooh. I haven't done this very much in showing other people on a video type source. Also, this is probably too much of the string. I don't think about it very much when I do it. I just kind of do it. So thinking about it's making it weird. Just doing it. This is where one of those little tool things, the yellow thing that I talked about earlier, comes in handy. I pretty much always start with a low E. It's just a good reference point and it stays in tune a bit better than the other ones do once it's once it's tight. Okay, so. So, you know, you can just kind of tell like, oh, it's getting tight. And then what you'll see there is you see how it's all kind of in an or like bottom to top if you don't pay attention then it can like be on the bottom and the next part kind of go over it and be at the top it gets all messy like that and then it'll try to fix itself so that sometimes in the middle of playing it'll you know the string will move to some other part and then it'll get a lot looser um and then it'll just mess up and sound weird so i've got a tuner on my guitar so i'll stick this tuner on There's an E. And it would be great is if it just stayed an E always, but it's not going to. So I'm going to show you how to, um, I guess there's a couple different ways, but there's, um, you might be able to hear my wife in the background. I don't really know. Um, the string will stretch out over time because it's like wound and stuff. So, you know, it hasn't ever been actually stretched out. I think there's some you can buy that are like pre-stretched. Probably they're actually not. Sometimes, maybe they are, I don't know. But, so I like to do it like this. I'll just take the string and kind of just bend it out a little bit. Kind of pull up with one hand, pull down with the other hand. Or kind of go like this too, shake it out. And what that'll do is it'll stretch the string out so that it doesn't do it for as long. It'll still stretch itself out for like a couple days or whatever maybe which and when I say stretch itself out I mean like you'll tune it up to an E and then it'll um, drop down you know within the course of an hour or something down to a D and so you know you can't play as much in that period of time because it's just all gonna be out of tune and stuff so here we go as you can tell it's now a D now it's an E yeah doesn't that sound so much, well I didn't show you really what the string sounded like before, but it sounds a lot better than it used to before. Um, okay, so that's pretty much what you'll do for all the strings, and I'll do all of them, but I'll fast forward or skip or something like that. But the other thing just to, that I'll mention, I like to go from the outside in, so I'll do E, E, A, B, D, G, or something like that, 
And the reason for that is, especially on acoustics, sometimes this part of the bridge, this white bit, um, is movable, like it can move up and down. And so if the E is tighter down here, then the high E will like be tighter up there. So you can think you're in tune on one side of the guitar. So if you're doing it all the way down, then this bit here will like be dipped down and then it'll eventually move to where strings that you thought were in tune aren't going to be in close to in tune anymore. And it's just annoying. So, okay, and then I'll just show you the last bit with this specific string and then I'll do all of them and that'll kind of be it. Uh, Alright, so yeah, I've got my wire clippers and then just don't cut too close there. Um, but the nice thing is that these strings, because they're under the hole and stuff and the way they've built these, they're pushing up against the part of the string that's sticking out. So it's not going to, um, it's not going to come out really as long as there's a little bit of slack on the side. So I'd say maybe like a uh, centimeter, half inch kind of deal. And then, yep. Oh, yeah, I'm a real man. Okay, so there you go. That's what you got. And that bit's kind of pokey, so watch out for it. You can do a little bit less than that if you want. I might change it later. I don't really know. Um, yeah, then I'll just do that with all the strings. Uh, here we go. One thing too I forgot to mention, um, it is important, I mean essentially because it's I guess just the traditional way to do it, which direction the strings go um, to be tightened and stuff. So down on the lower three strings, so 6, 5, and 4 on the E, A, and D, on these guys, Joe, Schmo, and Bo, um, you tune them, well I guess it's all counterclockwise when you're facing that way. But essentially, these guys, to tune up, you face away from you. Yeah, essentially, I guess you could say away from you. But you tune this way, like that. And then down here, it's the same thing, but it's the opposite direction in terms of it's facing you. So you're, tun you're tuning it this way. So, um, yeah, so these guys tune up this way, like that, see? Snap! If they get too high, they snap. I found that out first time I tried to tune a guitar. I was curious how high it went, and it's man exploded on me in my face. So, and then these guys, you tune them like this. Uh, snap. So that's that. Just that I let you know. I played some other people's guitars that were not the right way, and it got me annoyed. So, don't do that. All right, here we go. Have it. That's some new strings. <laughs> Wonderful. So yep, that's it. There you go. Put on new strings on again. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention: when you put the pegs on down here, those guys, um, make sure I've got an extra set. That's why I have this one. I didn't just take one off of it. Uh, you see that little dip right there? That guy faces towards the strings. So the string is going to go inside the little crevice thing. That's what it's going to do. Um, yeah, so that's important. And also, another thing, with the higher strings, you don't need quite as much slack because they're not as thick, so you don't need to... I put too much slack on the high E string, and I was working on it for like 50 hours. It was forever. Yeah, it was like seven whole days. Yeah, give or take. So, that's uh, how to put new strings on your guitar. So, quick overview. Number one. Take off your old strings, because you don't need them. Number two, your old strings are off. Uh, have new strings. Those are important. Have new strings. Number three, you know, stick the string in here. Stick peg in on top of it. Pull it tight. Step four, uh, get like about that much slack. Pull it back here, and then start twisting. Make sure that top and bottom, you know, it's like stacked from the bottom to the top. And it's not overlapping or doing some weird junk. Step five, stretch it out a little bit. Do that to all of them. And step six, rock and roll, baby. Rock and roll. All right, 
That's it. I'm done. Now, now you got strings. Peace.